Today, we are taking you to Alexandria, Virginia to meet Brian Branton, who every year transforms his historic home into a holiday wonderland. He has Christmas trees in almost every room, wreaths on every window, and his banisters and mantles are never forgotten. Enjoy this festive episode of Homeworthy, and remember to visit homeworthy.com shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on this channel. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Brian. Welcome to my house in Alexandria, Virginia, Brockett's Row. It's a circa uh, 1808 federal style home. Come on in. I'm Brian Branton, and I'm here with my beloved dog, Otzi, who clearly is very clingy. And welcome to my Alexandria, Virginia home. So this is definitely my biggest impulse purchase <laughs> that I have ever done. I had just moved into another home months before I found this house online. I, I was uh, doing as I always do and looking at real estate online while I was eating my lunch at my desk and came across this house and we became so obsessed with it that I posted about it on social media. If you go back through my Instagram, you can find out when I post about this house and said, look at this house that's for sale right now in Alexandria. I said, I I'm obsessed with it. In my mind, I've already bought it, decorated it, and moved in and decorated it for Christmas. So um, I, I kind of manifested and made it be. So I have always been, obsession is a very good word to describe my love of Christmas. I have always been a fan of Christmas. Uh, my mom took advantage of that when I was younger and would have me start decorating uh, stuff in our house. When I went to college, I, I decorated my dorm room. When I lived in a house in college, I decorated the house I lived in. I have always decorated for Christmas, whether I entertain or not. I do it entirely for me. And so everything that you see right here would be something I would do. I did this during COVID. Like I decorated fully for COVID even though no one could come in the house. So it's just something I love to do. It makes me feel good. I, I, I love the way it makes a house very joyful. So this house had been a law firm for 40 years. Uh, the law firm had done a really good job of preserving the historical integrity of it. Uh, they had the, the room we're sitting in right now was the conference room of the law firm, and they had put in cheap bookshelves everywhere. But they had done a very nice job of putting those bookshelves kind of in front of the existing woodwork. So when I came in and started removing things, the woodwork was all there underneath everything that they had put in. Now they had done some things like rip out every bathroom <laughs> and rip out the kitchen. So I, I very much had to make it back a house, but the bones of it very much felt like the house it had always been, which was nice. Hey, so this is my foyer and stairwell. Um, as you see, I spend a lot of time here at Christmas. I, I make this whole entire thing. It, it's, it's mostly just cedar garland, and I always use cedar because I think it dries well. And I'm always wanting to use evergreens, and people are like, oh, do you, do you change it out? You put it up so early. I'm like, no, because for me, you know, I like to see it age as it goes along. And then you're, by the time you're sick of it, it's easy to take down. You don't feel bad about it. I make this part of the arrangement um, as floral cages. You can buy these little cages that you put floral foam in and then you can attach anything to it. I use a lot of dried elements like these dried pomegranates, this dried yarrow, and then I add uh, boxwood and other types of evergreen to really kind of fill it out. Uh, to me, I, I just love it. It's, it looks very elaborate, but I swear it's easy to do. And I got total inspiration from doing this from one of my favorite Christmas movies. 
This is going to show you how weird of a kid I was. There was a movie, a made-for-TV movie in the 70s called The Gathering, and it was about a father who was dying and he wanted to gather his family back together. Again, I can't believe this was my favorite Christmas movie, but I was obsessed with the house in it. And if you go back and watch it, the house, um, the, the woman, the mother had put something very similar in her stairwell. She put a big pineapple right here, and if, if I could fit a pineapple on this newel post, I would do it in a second. This took a Marvel engineering feat to get this to stay, but I cannot tell you my trick on that because I never even remember how to do it. But that's my stairwell. Um, as you see, I'm a maximalist when it comes to my decor, uh, but this is also very random. It is called I like to buy things and then I figure out a place to put them. So the, what better way to do that than a gallery wall? Um, I actually took inspiration from Philip Mitchell, the great interior designer who did that amazing uh, stairwell up in New York at times. And so I always call this my Philip Mitchell inspired um, stairwell. And it is a random collection of artwork that I have bought um, st stuff like this that hung in the mudroom of my family home. My grandmother made that uh, embroidered piece. So uh, none of it is really what I consider highly, va highly valuable. It's just highly sentimental. And that's what uh, really can be described about my decor anyway. It's just stuff I like. Oatsy is the sweetest thing. So Oatsy, I got... Um, she, she's almost four years old. I, I got her in March of, of whatever year that was, 2019, I guess. Um, it was kind of a birthday present to myself, and she has just been the sweetest thing. I, I named her after O.T. Charles, who you probably know from having grown up in Georgetown. This is my living room. When I was talking about this being a law firm, this was the conference room of the law firm for 40 years. They had built bookshelves all along this wall and that's why I was scared when I was taking those book uh, the, those bookshelves down that you know the wood they would have ripped out the woodwork but no it was it was all underneath so all that original woodwork is there uh, this house has the original window panes in them and if my blinds were more open you could see that you know one of the residents that lived here at some point etched her initials in the window pane. So there's a, a giant G in that window pane from when, I, I don't know if this is true, but they would always say the, the woman would test her engagement ring to see if it's a diamond, and so she would have put her initial in the room. But it, anyway, whether it's true or not, I love the story, so I've got a G in that window. Um, this is where we spend the majority of our time. So I spend the majority of my time decorating this room. Um, the Christmas tree is, it takes a long time to do because I wrap, there are over 2,000 lights on the tree. I wrap every single branch and to do that, and I, and I mean literally every single branch. I get down on my knees and start at the bottom and work all the way up to the top. It takes about three, three hours just to put the lights on the trees. And then I would say it takes another solid three hours to put the ornaments on the tree. Well, I, I was gonna say my favorite part, and it's my favorite tree because it's really a tree of memories. Like if you point to an ornament, I can tell you exactly where I got that ornament and where it came from. So to me, it is a tree full of memories. Most of them are ornaments from when my family would take vacations. My mom was very much the same way. Wherever we would go, we would buy an ornament. Oh, and I, I actually, I will show you this one because it's one of my favorite stories. We were in Austria back in the 90s, and we went to go tour this palace, Sch Schönbrunn. I am probably horribly mispronouncing that. So they were selling Christmas ornaments in their shop. This was at Christmas time, and we're like, oh, let's buy an ornament. And we were looking at this ornament right here. I don't know if you can get, if you can see it. And I'm like, Mom, that looks like Mount Vernon. And she's like, yeah, you know, you're right. So we asked the shopkeeper, we're like, this ornament, what's this ornament? And they're like, oh, it's Schoenbrunn. And we're like, are you sure? It looks like Mount Vernon. She's like, no, no, it's Schoenbrunn. And we're like, is it like the carriage house or something? They're like, no, no, it's the palace, I, yeah, we swear. So we bought it, brought it back here, and then compared it to this other Mount Vernon ornament we have. And we're like, ah, we literally just bought an ornament of Mount Vernon in Austria, and that woman totally lied to us and said, but 
it, it's our favorite little memory. And so we both have those same ornaments. We always hang them side by side on our trees now. But every, every single ornament really has a, a really a, a no, I shouldn't say every ornament, because some of them are store-bought. But even those have memories for me. Like, I can remember buying ornaments when I was like 20 in college. And some of those are in the trees. They're kind of hidden in the back now. but. Um, that's my favorite part about Christmas is just all the memories that come from it um, every time. So that to me makes the most special tree is just ones that are full of memories. And my favorite ornament, it changes every year. So I, I can't even tell you what my favorite ornament is right now. I, I, these new baubles that I bought are, are really <laughs> nice. And there's a woman that she and I follow each other on Instagram and she makes these and I just love them so much. I think they're so pretty. It, it's kind of part of my Christmas party look. So I don't normally sit around on a Sunday dressed like this, but I'm treating this like uh, as if this were a Christmas party. So I, I have dressed up for you for that reason. It, it, it is my fun plaid tuxedo pants a cardigan to make it a little bit more homey and then a, a nice bow tie. I don't think anyone is into Christmas as much as I am. So, and I will say this, I'm probably a difficult person at Christmas because I'm like, no, don't touch that. <laughs> like, I will do that myself. That's not the way the ornament goes, the ornament goes here. I, I am sure I would be a very difficult person to deal with at Christmas time. So this room I like to decorate in how would a grandmother live <laughs> in a house and then I try to make it a little bit more cooler than just the typical grandmother. But I do very much like a very lived in aged look about a house. So um, I will buy pieces of furniture and then make them fit and hope they fit together. Um, I joked that I have painted this room three times in the six years that I have lived here. Uh, when I first bought it, it was this gray, I painted it this gray trim and with white walls. I bought this sofa and I love this sofa so much because it was very lived in and it had this floral stuff. I, bu I bought it for my bedroom and then I could not get it up the stairs into my bedroom. So I'm like, well, this is where this sofa is going to live now, but then it did not look good against the white walls. So I painted the room yellow to go with the sofa and I love the yellow. But then I decided to recover these chairs because I'm a big fan of flame stitch fabric. Again, that's the grandmother in me. And this flame stitch is great, but when it came out, it was way more yellow than I thought. So with the yellow walls and these chairs, I'm like, that is way too much yellow going on. So I painted it a third time and I painted it a red. The whole time keeping the gray trim because I was lazy. I didn't want to, because I will actually do the painting myself. I'm, I'm too cheap to pay somebody to, to paint it. So I will get out my rollers and paintbrushes and do it myself. So um, it has gone through a third transformation, but this, this has been my favorite transformation. I feel like it should have been this way um, all, all along. Although I kind of miss that white too. That white was really nice. There's a picture of my Christmas tree that keeps popping up on Instagram all the time and it's when it was white walls. And so I see that picture and I, I'm like, oh, I, I, miss, I miss the room that way. But, um, but this room, I, I love it so much. The fireplace, of course, is the centerpiece of it. And um, I spend a lot of time decorating the a garland for this. I, I, I make this whole thing, it's very similar to how I do the staircase. You know, that's the floral cages that I was talking about. The boxwood, this is boxwood roping that you can buy at a nursery, but if you buy boxwood roping from a nursery, it's really chintzy looking. And so I will buy that roping, I will rip it apart, and then put it back together myself. So it's actually in three, went one, two, three, four pieces. Um, and as I said, I, I kind of, it's like layered three times to make it more full and more rich. So what would take 15 minutes for somebody else? Probably that, this probably took a couple hours because that ripping apart the garland and rebuilding it just adds on extra time. That's why you never see me from Thanksgiving until <laughs> that, that Monday after Thanksgiving, because I am full on decorating in this house. 
that mirror, um, that actually hung in my family's dining room. We had that in the dining room. And it was the first thing that, when I bought this house, it's the very first thing that I put up, because I was like, oh, I have a mirror that I think would fit in this space on this overmantel. And I hung it, I'm like, oh, it was meant to be. It was like a perfect fit. So um, I, I like it. I, it also is just a little memory of home that it's hanging there too. When, when, when I first saw the house, they brought me in through the back. So the first thing I really saw was walking in this living room and seeing this fireplace. And I immediately fell in love with the fireplace. The second thing was then turning and seeing the stairwell. And I love, you can't tell because it's all covered with the garland, but it's a beautiful banister. And so I saw that and was like, uh, I'm, I'm sold. I've, I've got to get into this house. And let me tell you, this house did not show well because the whole thing was carpeted, being a, a, a law firm, with that ugly, blue office carpet it, it, it was it was great as a matter of fact in the sales contract I'm like you've got to rip out all the carpet <laughs> before I even step foot in it to move in there's a game table here that's uh an early 1800s game table from New York that's fun I buy I'm, a, I'm an, a little bit of an auction addict so I will scour auctions all the time I use an app called invaluable um, and it links to pretty much every auction house. So I, I have my favorite auction houses that I do, and I will scour stuff all the time, and then will even kind of upgrade pieces as I go along. So that game table, which I love now, may get <laughs> replaced out at some point in the future when I find a game table that I think is even better than that one. So um, my problem is I am really bad about reselling stuff, so I, I given away stuff to either my mom or my sister it ends up in their homes or to friends even. So I had a great chandelier that hangs in a friend's house now in New York. This is my little, just a little Otsi who you guys have seen. It's a little sculpture of her. It's just a little, it's some sculpture in England that, that made that. Oh, I think it, it's just such a great gift. I, I like to put little scarves on these um, sculptures. I, I think it's a little fun frivolous thing to do to make it look a little bit more Christmassy. So you can see right there. Um, I, I just kind of add from there. This is the way I actually live. And just to kind of show you a little quirk about how I do things. As you see, you don't see a TV around, but I watch TV. I watch some junky, stupid TV. And I built a little stand to roll my TV in and out. So I can kind of hide it in this corner, but I literally roll it out this way and this is how we watch TV. I call it very old school because if you remember back in the 70s, your TV sat on the floor and that's why you watch TV. So it kind of reminds me of my childhood doing it this way, but it's, it's not a perfect solution, but it's a solution I love and it's quirky. And I think it's better for your neck to kind of look down as opposed to looking up. So I, I've lived in DC, the DC area for 31 years. I, I, I worked on Capitol Hill for 16 of those years as a uh, political staffer um, and since then I, I manage the federal government affairs office of a large corporation that's what I do in my day-to-day -day. all of this is just for fun and for passion and it uses is that the right side of your brain it's the right side of my brain that I, I try to because the work left side of my brain's boring <laughs> I shouldn't say that my boss will see this it's a lot of fun but this side's very much fun too this is my dining room, obviously, with the table. Just to give you a little bit of a history, when the law firm had this house, this is what they made their reception room. And they had built, right where that chest and paintings are, they had built a door there and had their guests coming in from my side kitchen door and into this room. So that was one of the first things I changed and got rid of that door and took it back. Um, this addition, this and the kitchen were built 50 years after the house was built. So this was from 1858. Um, I really like it. it. It's proportioned very well. Um, this is, speaking of dining rooms, this was the dining room table that was in my parents' dining room. Um, I bought these bamboo chairs um, 
at auction because I'd love mixing up a little bit more of a, a modern piece with an old thing. Um, and then as you see, I have books. I have books in pretty much every room you go. So I have books stacked in the library, books stacked in the living room, books stacked in my bedroom, just everywhere. The most interesting piece in, in this room is that large Girondal mirror, which is massive, um, hung in President Taft's summer White House in Beverly, Massachusetts. And so I got it from auction and brought it there. And I had measured and was like, okay, it'll fit. And then as I was hanging, I'm like, oh my God, this is barely fitting. But I kind of like how it is massive in the scale of this room. It really kind of dominates the space. Um, I always do a big centerpiece in this room at Christmas time, and I tend to make it very fruit focused. Uh, that's a little bit of my nod to, you know, like, most people say um, Colonial Williamsburg, but I always just say Southern. It, it's, it's a nod to what I remember growing up with and how people would decorate. And so I, I, I love this. I change it up from every year, um, although. At the heart of it, I will tend to do something very similar to this because I love to have a pineapple. Um, I always like to have a tree in my bedroom and this bay fits in very nicely to have a tree. Before I bought this server, um, this piece of furniture here, I had a full size tree in here. Once I bought this piece of furniture, I'm like, well, I can't, I don't want to move the furniture to put a tree, but I definitely still wanted a tree. So now you have a tabletop tree and I do it that way. So this is very much my citrus inspired tree and it's very much natural elements from cinnamon sticks to dried oranges. I, I, I put some dried yarrow in there, it's, it, you know, in cranberry garland. Um, it's just anything that I think looks natural. I, I make all the wreaths that I put in the home. So I will buy an actual base wreath and then add the elements to it. And I pull out my hot glue, <laughs> my hot glue gun and get going. And from there, I use a lot of the same dried floral elements that I've done before. Um, these contain things that are called um, Bellini nuts, which I think really mimic citrus, but they're actual nuts. So they're, they're easy to use and I use those a lot. My china set is from, I, I love finding stuff that's really the same age of the house. So this china set is from 1810. So it, to me, it, it really fits with when, what the original inhabitants of this house would, would have. And I display, I use it, but I also display it. So I, I just think it's really pretty. Um, this nativity scene is one of those, this is part of my, I will buy something whether I have a place for it or not. I, I bought this, I was in law school and I was going to law school at night and I was working full time. I had zero money and I had no money to spend on nativity set, but I plopped down my credit card and bought this nativity. I can't even remember how much it cost at the time, but it felt like it cost $8 billion. Um, I just loved it because I've never seen another one like it. It's this Delft. Um, my one little cheeky thing is I have a Delft Santa Claus that I always kind of add to it because I think it's just a little funny to have Santa Claus at the nativity scene. So this is, <laughs> as you said, my Georgian uh, 18th century sideboard. Um, I, I bought it at auction and really loved the colors of it because this had a very orange tone to it that I felt like really brought out the orange I did in there. These knife boxes came from a historic state in Virginia um, at one of the auction estate sales that they had for that. Um, I had Oatsy's portrait made and I, I love it so much because I, I was trying to find an artist that I felt like painted like John Singer Sargent <laughs> for pets. And I think this artist did such an amazing job and she really captured the spirit of Oatsy. I asked her, I'm like, can you please paint her with her, ma her ball in her mouth? Because Oatsy always has that ball in her mouth. And she did. And I, I just love it. It really kind of captures who she is to me. And of course, I... I think it's only appropriate that it sits here at the head of the table because Oatsy is the head of the household. This row of homes was built by a man named Robert Brockett, who is a master brick mason from Scotland. He bought this uh, land that contained a bunch of shanties as a way to re-gentrify the area and make it nicer. So he tore down what was here, built these four homes. Uh, his, he, he and his family never lived here. 
Um, they always used it as uh, rental properties and they owned it until the 1920s. Um, this house and the house on the other end are exact mirror uh, opposites of one another and then the two houses in the middle also mirror each other though but they're a little different from these two end units. I love federal architecture. There's the simplicity of federal architecture. It makes a house flow really well. They, they're very thoughtful in the way they plan and laid out these homes. So anytime I go into another home and I always look at it, it's like, oh, could I move and change this home? It, in my mind, it never compares to the way that I think this house flows and lays out. I just love that aspect of it. So this is my little kitchen, the house. As I said, the law firm ripped out the kitchen. There was no kitchen when I, when I moved into this house. And actually for the first couple years, I had no kitchen at all, which shows you how little I cook. Um, I wanted to bring a little touch of the house I grew up in and the house I grew up in North Carolina, the entire first floor were brick floors. So um, I wanted to bring that feel back. So I added this brick floor into this kitchen and I just love it. And this butcher block was in the kitchen of the house that I grew up in. So it's a little memory of my home there too. As you see, I don't have very much counter space, but I wanted to make it special. I love using wood elements, which you will see in other parts of the house. And so I added uh, wood countertops and that's my little kitchen. So this is probably my favorite room in the house. It's, it's my little library. It's, it's not very big at all, but I, I just love it. It's so I, I'm actually very anal about things. So there is a huge organized way that I have these books. This is my fiction side. This side is my nonfiction side. Although there is some fiction thrown in there too, because I just didn't have room to put them all on this one side. Um, you know, there's, it, this room I spend a lot of time in. It also houses probably my favorite piece that I have, which is this chair that came from the Gray Gardens um, estate. It was actually uh, owned by the Beale family, big and Edie, little Edie Beale. You can, if you watch the documentary, you can see the chair there when they had the estate sale when Sally Quinn was selling the house. Um, you know, uh, Adam and I rushed up there and went and bought this chair. Uh, this also came, this little box came from Grey Gardens as well. It's, this room is just a very cozy feel to me. I, I, I love the color of it. Um, this is the only, I use Ferro and Ball a lot through the house, but this is the one paint color that's not Ferro and Ball. Uh, I had seen it in another house and, you know, had to ask the owners what they painted and then uh, came back and painted this library that color. I, I just like it because it's very warm and it's very inviting and it's very cozy. The the mirror house of this that I was talking about, our friends, they use this as their master bedroom. But you're going to see why I do not use this as my master bedroom when you go into what I can use as my master bedroom. It's a little it's a little bigger than this room, but I really like it. I'm not this popular. I do not get this many Christmas cards on December fourth, but. We are by, by December 4th, I should say. But what I do is I save Christmas cards every year so I can decorate with them. And I, I, one of my favorite ways to decorate is just simply to kind of run twine and hang the cards on there. But it cracks me up because some of these cards, like my, my friend Ethan's kids here, they're in college and, and you see them right now. So I have had these cards for years. I joke like, here's Alan Tipper Gore when they were still married. <laughs> so these cards are old, but some I have, some are new, some that just came in this year, but I will keep them forever. This was another great gift of mine. It's an architectural model of actual Brackett's Rose. So this is my house. That's the mirror end house that we were talking about there in the two centered houses that you see right there. But that's what that's Brockett's Ruins full. I put a little candle in here, which you can't see now, but at night it, it lights up. Uh, so I do that Christmas time. It changes all the time what I call my taste. I, I like to have a very lived in look. Um, I, I do not care if a house or furniture shows its age. Uh, if you really look closely at these floors, you will see 
the scuff marks from all the years of use. Uh, and when I moved in, people were like, oh, are you going to refinish these floors? And I was like, good Lord, no. I, I, I like to see that age of it. So that's also kind of the way I like to decorate. I, I, I call it very traditional, uh, but it's also eclectic in a lot of ways. I don't live in a museum. Um, I don't treat it as a museum. I treat it very much as a home. And I, I buy things that I like and then try to make it all fit together. Some would say it works. Some would probably say it does not work. <laughs> So th this is my bedroom, and this is when we we're in the library, I was saying, that's why I like to use this as my bedroom. It's a huge room. It's the same size as the living room downstairs. The law firm, the, the partner of the law firm had this as his office, and he said, in the fireplace behind you, he would always have a fire lit every day. I rarely light a fire in here, but I should. I should have one going right now. I love it because you have a full-on seating area with your bed over there and it allows me to really fully decorate this room for Christmas too. So I, I like to put in a full-size Christmas tree here. Um, this room being a bedroom just has a lot of elements that I, I love that mean a lot to me. That this my, my father has since passed away and he was a big horse guy. That is his was his favorite saddle. So um, my mom told me, she's like, oh, you should take his saddle after he died. And at first I wasn't going to do it, and I'm so glad I did. I found this piece that's called a chamber horse that the saddle sits on. It's an 18th century form of exercise. And I'll show you this. Folks would sit on this and, and actually use it as a form of exercise, like riding a horse. They didn't actually have to put a saddle on it, but it just is a great place to, to put the saddle, so I, I kind of leave it there. My other big uh, interesting piece of furniture that goes along with the Great Gardens chair is Georgia and Table right here used to belong to Catherine Hepburn. So um, it came from the, I didn't buy it from the Sotheby's auction. The person that bought it at the Sotheby's auction resold it after um, they had passed away and I bought it at their auction. I framed this picture of Katherine Hepburn from Life Magazine because you can see the table sitting behind her. And I always, so I keep it on my little side table from that. But I, I love that little aspect of it. Um, every other piece here is just either stuff, I love an elaborate carved tester bed. Uh, the other stuff is, is really a whole mishmash of furniture. This is a similar chair that I had in the living room, if you noticed it. Um, like a, it's a George Smith piece that I loved. Um, that furniture down there is what used to be in the living room back when it had the white walls. So it was a, it was a much more kind of colonial traditional look. So it, as you see, it switched out completely. Uh, but it works well here. I recently wallpapered uh, this bedroom back in July when I was doing a renovation of the bathrooms and, and, and everything. And I wanted to go with a bold paper. Um, actually, I really wanted to go with um, Benison's Wheat Flower, if you know that. Gil Schaefer's bedroom has it, and I was obsessed with that bedroom. And I was going to do that paper, and I thought, well, everybody's going to, it's going to look like I'm just trying to copy Gil Schaefer. So I opted to go with something a little bit different. It's very bold, but showing you how crazy I am. I have already found another wallpaper <laughs> that I might go with. So my next year plan is to repaper this room entirely and it will look completely different. And <laughs> you, will have, you will have to come back and see it in its new form. I was touring um, Montpelier, James Madison's house, and he had yellow doors. And, and I was asking the docent about it and they said that he was in the process of faux graining all his doors. And, Typically, when you faux grain, you paint this yellow base uh, before you do that faux graining. But then he liked the yellow so much, he left it. And I loved it because I just thought it added a pop of color. So I have done the same in here and really kind of tie in this pop of yellow and all my doors. You see it in the living room downstairs. At some point, I may faux grain them, but right now I, I like my Montpelier-esque pop of yellow. And the other interesting thing I have in here is I bought this huge gavel at auction. It's a strongman's piece. It's what um, 
they actually used it for the elephant. The elephant would hold this in the trunk and then slam it down to do that. I think it's called the strongman contest. It would ring the bell at the top. I, to me, it was all quirky and fun. I, I used to own a farm out in Rappahannock County, Virginia, and that piece sat on my mantle in my living room there. And I, I haven't really had a place to put it, so it just kind of sits in a corner, but I, I love to do it. I just redid this bathroom. But the, the thing about old houses is that bathrooms are really small, and so I wanted to make it a jewel box and had this room paneled and then I, I really wanted it to look like this was the bathroom. When they finally installed plumbing in this house, I wanted this to look like the bathroom they put in and it stayed there. So I really um, spent time finding tile that I thought looked like it would be from the 20s. Um, I had that sink made. This is the wood elements I love. I, I bought the waterworks space, but then had a woodworker make this walnut top on top because I just felt like it gave a richer feel to it. Um, so I, I really love my teeny little bathroom. I don't, I don't even think I would want a big bathroom if I could have it. As you see, my gallery wall continues going all the way up the stairs. Some of my favorite, I have this weird obsession with morning art. I know it's really creepy, uh, you know, but I just, I just love it. It reminds me of the old PBS mystery shows and the beginnings of those mystery shows. That's what that looks like to me, an art form. So anytime I see some morning art, I will kind of pick it up. I have that. I have, I, well, I don't know where it is. There's a, somewhere else on this wall, there's some more morning art. Um, and then other pieces, as I said, are very kind of sentimental value. Some artists have painted my house before and, and given me that and oh well, actually i'll point out because the artist that did this house she's so talented she was just asked by the um, prince and princess of wales to paint their uh christmas invitation for this event they're having at, the, at westminster and so it's the same artist so i i feel really special that she did my house and the prince and princess of wales um, used her for their Christmas invitation. I also extend the garland going all the way up to the third floor. Because even though I rarely come up to the third floor myself, I feel like people who do should still get to experience Christmas. This is a stupid little thing to point out, but I'm gonna point it out. This is the door to my attic. And I, I just love how little and quirky it is. And I put a little wreath on there because I thought that was fun to do. I decorate my um, guest bedrooms too, and my family's coming up for Christmas. Now, my family, uh, I love this bed. This is a 19th century French faux bamboo bed. Um, my family hates my beds because I don't know if you noticed, but every single bed that I have in this house is a full size bed. And so they're always like, why can you not own a queen size bed? At the very least, a queen size bed. I think they all sleep in king size beds, but. When they come here, they're stuck in my little full-size beds. I don't do much in here, but I do like to hang wreaths on windows because I think it's, it's one of the easiest ways to decorate for Christmas. So it's nice to have something in the guest bedrooms when they come up here too. They're actually a pretty nice size. You know, this isn't a huge house, but it, the, it just flows really well. That's what I like about it. And, the rooms are nicely proportioned. You know, th this is called the bird room clearly because of this wallpaper. Uh, and I like to, in rooms with quirky angles, I like to wallpaper every aspect of it. Um, I also really like to carry the same color through a lot of the rooms. So the gray that you see in this trim and the gray you saw on that uh, other bedroom is the same gray that's in the living room. I really carry it throughout the house as a way to kind of anchor everything together. And it really pops out with the gray in these birds. Um, th there's not much, th I bought those when I was, tra I love to travel and I was in a trip to Cambodia and Thailand. And here's the thing, I, I was in like some antique store and I'm sure they probably made these two days before I bought them in this antique store. But uh, whatever they told me, I bought a hook, line, and sinker, and um, I, I just love them. I think they're really cool, and I like the pop of that mustardy yellow that it adds to the room, and I really try to pull that out with the lampshades I have there. When my guests come and stay here, I really do try to make them feel like they have a little bit of a hotel experience, and one of my little 
favorite things to do that is I had this stationery made. Not that anyone uses stationery like you have in a hotel, but I had it made of actual uh, a, a picture of the house with the name underneath Brockett's Row in case anyone does want to send a card from while they're here. And I, I leave them stamps and a pen and everything in case they ever want to do it. I'm, I'm very much a homebody. I, I will say this, that the first thing that I do whenever I move into a new space is I have to get my home situated just the way I want it. Like if, if my home is not livable and decorated the way I want it, I, I feel uneasy. You know, my, I feel like my life is not together. So home for me is really kind of bringing that comfort and joy. So I very much put a lot of thought and energy and time into making the home something I love because it, 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 it means so much to me. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.